Hello, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, crime isn't a problem until it happens next door. County Council increases recordation tax and cuts Mark Elrich's property tax proposal in half. If MCPS can't fix the achievement gap, will more money help? Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by former County Council member and president of Rebuilding Together Montgomery County, Nancy Florine, and Secretary of the Maryland Republican Central Committee, Mark Conkofer. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. Over the past two weeks, the County Council has addressed the budget needs of the county. Nancy, your former colleagues have been very busy lately. On May 9th, the County Council increased the recordation tax in Montgomery County, which is a one-time tax that applies to the principal amount of mortgage debt when buying and selling a home. The new rates impose nearly double the rates for homes over $600,000. And yesterday it increased the real property tax by 4.7%. Now with a faltering economy and rapid inflation, was this a wise move by the council? Well, I, you know, they did what they felt they had to do. Uh, I, I actually think the bigger issue is the impact tax increase that's going mm -hmm. into effect automatically. Uh, now, to build a new uh, single family home, I think the cost is up to 50,000 bucks off the top. That's what's going to affect affordability going forward. Think about the recordation tax. It's something that comes at you uh, when you're at settlement. You don't really know about that <laughs> until you're at the table or, you know, the couple days before. So there's a mad scramble to cover the cost of the recordation tax. So I think that's less of a burden than uh, some of the other things that are coming down the pipeline. Well, the, the recordation tax actually affects your ability to get a loan because it co goes into your overall uh, total cost, and the lenders look at the lenders look at that. You may not know about it. The buy the consumer, the borrower may not know about it prior to uh, the day before right. or two before settlement. But certainly the lenders look at it, and it, it also prices Montgomery County well above all of the other jurisdictions in our area. I mean, even the District of Columbia doesn't have taxes as high as Montgomery County. So it, it's a significant impact. And if you're competing with uh, Anne Arundel County, Howard County, Prince George's County uh, for, for uh, new residents, for affordability, it really has a negative impact on what people, can, what people can do. Well, you know, it's part of that big cash flow moment uh, at settlement where so much money is passing hands at that moment uh, that's the thing. Uh, people don't focus on it. They're well, looking at that, their rural out-of-pocket costs. I mean, that's the terrifying thing when they tell you like a week in advance, all of a sudden you you purchased the home of your dreams and now you got to come up with all this extra cash you didn't. Mark, so that it's built into the long-term cost. That's for well, sure. Well, it may be, but Mark, the median, Mark, the median home price in Montgomery County is five hundred thirty-two thousand. So if this kicks in at six hundred thousand, that means half the half the properties sold in Montgomery County are going to be impacted by this tax. You know, count, mm -hmm. uh, what I found amazing, and this goes to Nancy's point as well, Council President Evan Get Glass said in his statement that the recordation tax premiums are projected to have no impact no impact on the affordability of the price of housing. What do you think? Is Nancy right that the impact taxes that they, they passed more important than the recordation taxes? Well, I, 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 Nancy is, is right on, on on citing that because it is, it is very significant uh, and a big impact. I, I'm reminded of the frog that's in the, the pan of water that's slowly heating up. Uh, uh, collectively, all these things have an impact, and it's a little like the frog that finally, when the water boils, uh, ends up uh, deceased. Um, collectively, these are all making Montgomery County less affordable. The notion that the recordation taxes, which is just, as you mentioned, just a tad above the median, um, it doesn't have an impact on affordability without the, the trickle down that takes place. 
doesn't pass the straight face test. Well, it's pretty amazing. But Nancy, the big issue was that what the council did yesterday, which was it reduced the proposal proposed tax on real estate properties that the county executive Mark Elrich had proposed at 10, 10 cents or 10 percent and reduced it to 4.7 and in, and in effect cut the budget by one hundred and eleven million dollars. Well, you know, that sounds like a lot of money to most people. But if you look at the overall budget, it's nearly seven billion. So do the math. It's pennies that we're, that we're talking about here in terms of the overall budgetary impact of what they've done. Uh, it's you know it's a it's a message that we're not going to buy it all hook uh, the whole package. Uh, but overall, uh, it's not that much of a of a hit in terms of the overall cost to Montgomery County and to taxpayers. And the good news is, of course, under our rules, uh, your property tax can't go up more than 10% a year. So, I mean, for existing property owners. Uh, so that will help uh, cushion any, any combined cost of increased value and property tax increase. So there's that. Um, so it's, it's a statement. It's a statement. A statement couldn't enough they to have done more? The, the, couldn't they have cut? Couldn't takes, they have cut more if they wanted to? I mean, sure. as you as you point out, one hundred and eleven million dollars is the pimple on the elephant's ass. Couldn't they have cut more? Well, what? I wouldn't put it quite that way. Uh, but you know, the major cost of uh, Montgomery County government is employee salaries and benefits. They didn't touch that. So, you know, they're messing around the edges in terms of what they can reduce spending on. Well, uh, I think, so, they, I mean, uh, you know, the school the, system I think didn't get is flown out the window. And, and Mark, Adam Pugnuco, writing in Montgomery per Perspective, says everything the government does ultimately flows from the economy. Okay. And here's the thing, folks our Montgomery County economy is not healthy enough to pay our bills. That's not just because of COVID. I could have made a 10 part series. But when you have uh, growth problems in population, real gross domestic product, real per capita gross domestic product, personal incomes, wage and salary incomes, employment, every way, average wages and proprietor's income, it's hard to pick any other combination of measures that can offset all of that. Are, is the county council just living in a pipe dream? Well, Montgomery County's business model, if you can describe it, that has been historically proximity to the federal government, which drove economic development. We've had government workers and then we had contractors and we had all the support personnel for that. Um, A and B, high taxes, but high services. And so the, the idea was we would imply uh, implicit bargain or explicit bargain, if you will, was that uh, those services would be there and that would comp the taxes would be paying for that. The services are declining. The proximity to the federal government is not the advantage that it used to be because of the ability to distance. Um, and, and Montgomery County really hasn't recovered from that, those challenges. Well, we have to go, we're gonna go on to our next topic, which, which dovetails into to your message right there, Mark, because it's, it's about the services. And Montgomery County school system has been the golden idol of the county for more than 50 years. So as long as three or four high schools were highly ranked nationwide, most politicians bowed down before the altar on Hungerford Road. Now, however, with recent reports of the continued achievement gap in the schools, particularly, as we all know, in the eastern part of the county, council member Natalie Fanny Gonzalez is demanding answers as to why there has been so little improvement. Nancy, how can the hierarchy at MCPS can justify things when only 32% of the students can read and write at grade level? Well, I'm not sure where that, that particular statistic comes from, Casey, but well, I will say, I think they're still uh, recovering from uh, the lack of consistent schooling during COVID. And they're gonna be digging out of that hole for some time. And it's not throwing money at the uh, issue that solves the problem. It is time and effort. I mean, I don't blame Natalie for being uh, 
ticked off. But remember also her district has a lot of turnover in it. Uh, a lot of family, a lot of apartment buildings there. Uh, a lot of families moving from place to place, a certain amount of transition there, almost more so than many, most places in Montgomery County. So no doubt that's affecting her perception and her people's experience. But overall, it's it's gonna be a problem for school systems everywhere for a long time, I think. Well, I mean, we've been talking about, I mean, th this show has been on the air for almost 35 years and I've been on the show for 20. It, we've talked about, the Montgomery County school system for a long time and the achievement gap, it hasn't improved. In the 20 years that I've been on the show, it hasn't improved at all. Even, even during Jerry Weiss' time as you know, superintendent of schools, it really didn't move the needle. So Mark, you, know, you had two children matriculate through the public school system. Is it lack of money or lack of will to educate? Well, I'm not sure either is the answer. My recollection as a parent, and, and we were fortunate enough to send our kids to the, you know, one of the W schools that shows up well in the rankings. But my recollection as a parent was that uh, uh, we were expected as parents to substantially supplement um, what our kids got. They, there's a cottage industry of tutors and support in Bethesda that parents send them. Uh, parents are obviously are also very active in, in providing support and complementing the education for homework. Um, MCPS relies very heavily at those high performing schools on parents to have the resources to supplement that. Um, and I don't think that they collectively have really gone back to Jerry Weiss days have addressed that issue that um, that, that creates those kinds of differences and they're not able to uh, uh, but, it, but isn't that a disgrace that you have to have to hire tutors? Not all families who send their kids to public schools can afford the tutors. Absolutely. I mean, that's a disgrace that our Absolutely. school system is failing. Nancy. Well, you know, I had two kids graduate from Montgomery County Public Schools and we didn't hire tutors. So I don't think that's a fair assessment. But I do think that uh, probably uh, there's a continues to be a wealth disparity in Montgomery County that affects the ki children's experiences in the community and at home. And I'm sure that plays a role in all of that. And that is not something MCPS can uh, address. I say, I do miss Jerry. He was the best salesperson ever for Montgomery County schools. Uh, and his message was clear. We don't hear that anymore. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. Uh, uh, I know the Board of Ed does their best, and to sue, so does the current superintendent. Uh, but their issues have have changed. Uh, life has gotten more complicated for these children and for the school system and for uh, expectations. And as I said, I do think a lot of it has to do uh, with the range of wealth uh, wealth within Montgomery County. And you can always see that in terms of which schools has have the most graduates, uh, which schools have the kids who are most successful in college applications and got it going down the line. And the shift from of East and West hasn't changed. Uh, no, and that, that continues that, to be that, a problem. I mean, that's it's it's been the same. So you would you would think that in 20 years they might be able to come up with some programs to address that difference. I I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just you know, I'm, I'm floored by, by, by the lack of ingenuity in the school system. Nancy, Mark, you may, the last word. I was going to say, Nancy, you may not have hired tutors, uh, but I'll bet you were very involved with homework um, and providing supplement. And that may well be something MCPS needs to take a look at is, is its reliance on homework as a reinforcement tool uh, for kids. That that's going to create this helps create this unfortunate gap that exists. Well, I mean, let's face it. In the eastern part of the county, there's a large Hispanic population, and there's a large population of people where English is a second language, and parents helping their children, uh, you know, pass through through the education system is difficult for the parents as well as the child. I mean, there's got to be some something done to improve this, uh, the achievement gap. We can't, we can't tolerate what's going on right now. 
I, I see you nodding in agreement, so I'll say I'm going to have the last word. When we come back from this short break, crime isn't a problem until it happens next door. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Crime, or at least the perception of crime, is changing the nature of peaceful and safe Montgomery County. For years, residents have behaved under the impression that there is very little crime in the county and celebrated the high quality of the county police force. But that impression is a thing of the past because every day there is some new headline in MoCo 360, the Gaithersburg Gazette, or on the Next Day app, or on our own Montgomery community media about some type of criminal activity. No longer is crime relegated to Silver Spring, Germantown, Gaithersburg, and Wheaton. Now the number of car thefts and stolen catalytic converters from Potomac has increased dramatically. Mark, just last Tuesday, an armed carjacking occurred outside the Whole Foods Market in North Bethesda, a block from my office, somewhere I walk on almost a daily basis. And for those that don't know the area, it's tiny. It's a small triangle of retail across from what was once a mighty White Flint Mall. It's almost unimaginable that there would be a carjacking on these narrow streets with designated bike lanes. What's going on? Well, and, and I'm very familiar with that area uh, and uh, have shopped there and, and dined in that area. So yes, that, that cuts home. And it highlights that lack of, of up safety um, that folks feel uh, increasingly in Montgomery County. Um, and this goes to the, you know, we pay high taxes, we expect the services. Um, people are scared. So Nancy, in the past two days, there was a shooting that led to a murder outside of the Wheaton Metro and another armed robbery in Chevy Chase. Statistics show that violent crime is up in Montgomery County and it rose 17% down county. And in the meantime, police staffing is declining and the county council, the county executive, to be fair, they don't seem to have any answers or clue how to fix it. And they're more concerned about saving the planet and installing new electric vehicle charging stations. What realistically can be done? Well, I mean, I, I think you put your finger on it. Uh, the progressive, uh, nature of the Montgomery County Council and the county executive uh, caused them to not have a clue uh, when it comes to public safety. Um, it is not a priority for them. It has never been. And as these things increase, uh, it's a big challenge. Uh, and the police force numbers aren't, aren't great. They're down. And uh, it, it continues to be a uh, Problem. Now, regionally, I'm not sure where we where we sit in terms of the crime statistics, uh, but I think it is a statement of the of a gang activity and b poverty that's driving uh, this throughout the region and Montgomery County. You know, it typically has been pretty easy pickings for people. Uh, I still see people don't lock their cars, regardless. Uh, what they've been told. Uh, people are still um, not paying attention to personal safety issues, which they should all the time. Uh, luckily, uh, we haven't had too much in the way of uh, um, personal attacks and the like, and hopefully um, that will stay that way. But the crime we've seen in other areas is also in increasing here. Just, just the other day at the CVS drugstore in, at Sangamore Shopping Center, three individuals walked in with uh, pillowcases, went over to the cosmetic aisle and just scooped up all the, as many of the cosmetics as they could carry out. And, and it only took less than a minute. They were in and gone in less than a minute. I mean, these types of crimes they affect all of us because costs will rise at CVS. They may be forced like the Target stores in San Francisco to put everything behind a locked and uh, uh, doors and cabinets. I mean, this is affecting our whole quality of life, isn't it, Mark? A absolutely. Uh, and, and you kind of put your finger on one of the costs that we have, which is the lack of availability of services because uh, places like CVS end up closing. The one near me happened to close. I don't know it was crime related, 
but uh, lack of services as a result of retailers having to pull back uh, in response to crime. I mean, N Nancy touched on one of the issues. One of the issues is, is that we're having trouble hiring police officers um, in part, and this is not just Montgomery County, this is a, a problem much broader than, than our area. And part of that is the in the last couple of years, the way people have approached, uh, looked on police officers has really caused a lot of people to look at for other, other jobs, other occupations. Um, and without, you know, well-trained, competent, professional police officers, we really don't get the law enforcement that we, we deserve. Well, year, years ago, when I was uh, a counsel for a trade association, I, I sat on several boards that dealt with electronic tags and, and products. And at that time, you know, the uh, retailers believed that a 2% uh, shrinkage rate or theft rate was acceptable. Now it's well over five and, and close to six percent uh, on a daily on a on a regular basis. So that has a great bottom line impact on all, all of these stores. And I don't know what the answer is other than trying to reverse some of the policies that um, that have been in, been in place. I mean, our recruiting of police uh, uh, new police officers is is being hurt as more and more are retiring. Anybody want the last word, Nancy? Well, I. I'd say, you know, people don't know uh, what's going on. There's so little uh, newspaper coverage of what happens in Montgomery County now. Uh, you really have to hunt it down. And so the community, by and large, does not have a sense of um, these kinds of issues, of, uh, frankly, most issues uh, affecting Montgomery County, including certainly uh, taxes and the budget. Uh, you know, but for you, uh, but for Adam Pagnuco, but for a couple of news sources that people have to hunt to find, they wouldn't know because you won't find it from reading the Washington Post. Well, that was a great advertisement for Montgomery Community Media and why people should tune in every day to get their news headlines that come out, five things about Montgomery County that you should know. So thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Mark. Stay tuned for Parting Shots when we come back from this short break. Welcome back. Now with Parting Shots, Nancy Florine. Uh, well, I want to uh, say hats off to the Montgomery County Council for their uh, recent appointments to the Montgomery County Planning Board. Um, Artie Harris is the new chair. And uh, there are a variety of other folks that they, whom they've appointed. I don't know them. And that's good. Uh, the council now is ensuring that we're going to have a planning commission that is independent, apolitical, really, and focused on the job. And I think that says a lot for the Montgomery County Council. And I wish the uh, new planning boards well, uh, planning board members well, as they take on that tough task of making difficult decisions about how we plan our future. Thank you, Nancy. Mark Gonkifer, your parting shot. Well, at the state level, the State Board of Education is making decisions about the future of our superintendent, Mohammed Chaudhry. Uh, and I would like to applaud Governor Wes Moore for his criticism following up on the superintendent's handling of uh, test scores. Without getting into all the details of that, I think the governor appropriately acknowledged the fact that there had been a failure to uh, be accountable uh, and to be transparent in the way information was being shared. Well, thank you, Mark. It's, a, it's a, an important topic for us all. I wanna thank you and Nancy for being here and uh, appearing on Montgomery County's hardest hitting political talk show. I appreciate the audience tuning in. For 21 this week, I'm Casey Aiken. <laughs>